Good morning. It is uh, Sunday, March 20th, uh, 2022. It's John Gilkison here, Aerostealth. And uh, I wanted to do a video this morning on the um, 300 mile run we had on our uh, 2019 Chevy Bolt EV uh, on one charge. And uh, how this come about was that on March, uh, I think it was 10th, uh, we took the vehicle into the dealer for the uh, GM uh, battery uh, recall replacement. And they replaced our 60 kilowatt hour battery in our car with a 66 kilowatt hour battery which is really good. And uh, it's like we've got a new car now. And when I went and picked up the car on uh, 12th of March, uh, it had, uh, the GOM said it had 272 miles of range. And uh, the dealer, ship mechanic said, driven the car 1.8 miles and that was it. So anyway, at the time, I was just thinking, well, all I really want to do is drive this car down to like 5% state of charge before I charge it up. I want to train the gum to uh, recognize all the parts of the batteries. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, it's a good way to test it. And I found out some things myself. So anyway, I happily went on my way. And in this whole driving cycle, I even did some uh, about 25 miles of, of interstate driving, you know, 65 miles an hour. And uh, I ran the air conditioner a couple times. And it was only when I got up to about the halfway point, somewhere around 150 miles of range or so left, that I began to realize that... <clears throat> The miles driven, let's say 150, and the estimated miles left added up to more than 300. And I said, wow, I could become a member of the 300 mile club for Chevy Bolts. And uh, so I thought it was worth a try. So from that point on, I became a little bit cautious because I knew if I continued driving on the interstate or running the air conditioner or anything like that, that I wouldn't make it. And also, the um, uh, routes that we have to drive back and forth to town are really conducive to uh, low energy consumption. I mean, I can take the interstate, but there's another route, which is an old highway, which I can do 55 miles per hour on, and then there's a several mile section of the road that's only 40 miles per hour. And why this is important, and I want to show this to you, is this uh, graph on aerodynamic loading right here. And what, what we're doing when we drive below 55, here's 50 miles per hour, right where my finger is. So that's 55 right there. And so any re driving regime in this region right here is far more conducive to energy efficiency than doing 70 on the interstate. So now this isn't hypermiling, it just happens to be those are the speed limits on those roads. And I don't have a great deal of stops or anything else. But even in in the city, driving at uh, 35 uh, miles per hour and having stop and go traffic at lights, this car is really efficient, of course. The opposite of what a gas engine is. So the long story short is I made it. Yesterday I made 300.4 miles. And when I pulled into the garage and then I... Uh, took the data and plugged the car into charge. Um, 
Let's see if I can get this so I'm not chopping off the top of my head. I wrote a blog on it right here, which is titled 300 miles on 60 kilowatt hours. And that's what the car reported. Um, 300.4 miles, 60 kilowatt hours. And um, that turns out to be um, rounds off to uh, five miles per kilowatt hour or 200 watt hours per, per uh, mile. And this is what you're going to have to do in order to reach 300 miles of range on a Chevy Bolt. And uh, it turned out my EVSE wheel efficiency, EVSE two wheel efficiency, was 151.65 miles per gallon. So that's what I had to average over the whole 300 miles. So now since I've charged up, it took, it actually took 60. 4.68 kilowatt hours to uh, um, charge the car. So, but as you can see, this is my projected range 306 miles this morning, which is what you get when you drive a really efficiency and then you recharge the gum, it's going to project higher higher efficiency for the next route, even though you haven't driven it yet. I could get in this car and hot rod it on the interstate and uh, not get 200 miles of range. So, um, there you have it. I was really pleased. It was uh, kind of a white knuckle event, I'm telling you. Um, I got in the car yesterday and I had 44 miles of range left and I said, you know, I better get this done today because as the car sets, it, it loses some of its energy um, out of the battery due to parasitic loads and so forth. And I said, just better go ahead and punch this out. And so I went down Donyana Road to the um, to town, which is a 45 mile per hour country road. And it has some stops in it. And... Uh, once I got to town, I turned around and came back, and, um, and I had to go to the post office in Radium Springs, which I did, but I still was about a mile short. I knew if I just drove home and got pulled up in my garage, I'd be at 299 miles, so I had to go about a half a mile or so past my driveway and turn around in order to get the job done. So, and I'll be the first to admit this is in the nature of a, uh, a feat. Um, this isn't normal driving. On the other hand, I wasn't hypermiling or anything like that. So, and I know what to expect now. When I got about a mile from my house, the car said it had seven miles of range left, and then all of a sudden it, it went from seven miles of range to just saying low. And it was blinking. I was at 5% state of charge and the GOM was just blinking at me. And the car kept telling me I needed to charge it right away. <laughs> so, as you can imagine, um, I <laughs> went past my driveway and then turned around and came back. And our house sits on top of a hill. It's 80, fo 80 foot of elevation change to get from the highway up to our house. And uh, I was worried about, uh, uh, this is the first time I've had real range anxiety. I was worried about running out of charge going up my driveway. Uh, I would have had to go get the truck to tow it up here. So anyway, but I needn't have because uh, the car gives you all kinds of warnings and it's pretty obvious to me if I went to 60 kilowatt hours and it was giving me these alarms and it's a 66 kilowatt hour battery pack, it seems like there's somewhere between 62 and 63, I think I've heard a figure, 62.7 um, kilowatt hours of usable battery pack. 
and they definitely do keep two or three kilowatt hours in the battery pack so that you uh, don't run it completely empty. <laughs> they just won't let you do it. The car will stop before that even happens. So anyway, uh, there you have it. Uh, fun stuff. And go visit uh, our Facebook page, Electric Vehicle Organization, Southern New Mexico, or EVOSNM. My blog on this is posted there. And so are pictures of my dash, um, you know, saying 300.4 miles, 60 kilowatt hours, and so forth. And so this was uh, pretty exciting. It was my, f my first uh, battery charging cycle on my brand new battery. And I figured I needed to get this done now because uh, we're in what we call the uh, i call the goldilocks uh, temperature regime for electric vehicle batteries i mean it, daily temperatures run from 60 to 80 degrees and the batteries just love living at 70 degrees and uh, so this was and it's a brand new battery so i figured this is my best shot at pulling over 300 miles and now i know if i go on a trip I can leave the house with 100% charge and I can easily make 200, 220 miles to a, to a, to a, a DC fast charger. And once I charge up to 80%, and that's only going down to 10%. And once I do that, charge from 10% up to 80%, I still got at least 180 miles in between DC fast chargers. So traveling is just not a problem in this car. Uh, it might be on some routes in certain areas of the country, but uh, you can plan all that with a better route planner, of course. So I'm going to let you go here um, before I run too long. Uh, happy uh, electron guzzling uh, consuming people. Uh, take care. I'm doing all this on three dollars and fifty cents per hundred miles compared to over twelve dollars for equivalent gas car nowadays. So that's not hard to figure out. See you on down the road, everybody. Take care.